In this final lesson for our SIRDS and indices topic, we will be looking at the relationship between each and the associated skills needed to be able to work with converting indices and SIRDS. Okay, so first up, we'll have a look at the beginnings of the relationship. That is, the simple example that we can provide to show the link between indices and SIRDS. So here it is. Any number raised to the power of a half, that is, it has a fraction as its index, as its exponent, as its power, is the same thing as square rooting that number. So in the example here we have a to the power of a half and that is the same as square rooting a. Similarly, raising something to the power of a third is the same as cube rooting that number. So here we have a to the power of 1 over 3 becomes the third root of a. Now, starting to recognize a pattern that whatever number is out front here as the denominator is also the number that is as the power of the root sign. So we can generalize that in our little blue box here and say that when we have a fraction as an indice, whatever the bottom number is, so here in our case it's the n, that is the power of the square root sign. So the same thing will work if you have x to the power of 1 over 7, that's the same thing as the seventh root of x. Extending that a little bit, now we have a fraction power that has both the denominator and a numerator. So here, n is still the denominator of our fraction, but we have m is now a numerator instead of just one. So using our laws, we can either split mn up to be x to the power of one over n, all to the power of n. Remember that our law is if you have x to the power of m, all to the power of n, you simply just multiply those powers together. So if we multiply 1 over n here and our m, we get our m over n. We can split it up another way and put m inside of the brackets and the 1 over n on the outside, but the result remains the same. We still get n translating to be the power of the square root sign and m translating to be the power of the value in the square root sign. So here in our blue box, we have the relationship that the n in a fractional power becomes the power of the square root sign and the m becomes the power of the number under that square root sign. Some examples and we're finished. Here we have the fifth root of k. So our k remains a k. We're going to have a fractional power. Now because k has no power under that square under the third sign, that is, assuming there is no power, we know there is a 1 there. 1 is the top number. The power of the square root sign is the 5, so 5 is the denominator. And that's it. Over here, in our next example, the seventh root of a to the power of 4. So the a, the base remains the same. The power of the a is a 4, so that is our numerator. And the power of the square root sign at the front is a 7. So that becomes the denominator. Okay, in this next example, it gets a little more complicated. Now we've got an 81 and a w cubed under the one square root sign. So what we're going to have to do is treat each of them a little separately. So we're going to write them there. We're going to leave a bit of room between them so that we can have the room to write our little indice powers. Dealing with the 81. The power of the 81 is we can't see anything, so we assume that it's 1. And we divide that by the power of the square root sign which is 4. So that's 81 to the power of a quarter. The W, on the other hand, has a power already. It is 3. And then we're going to divide that by the power of the square root sign, which is 4. Now we're going to clean this answer up a bit. 81 to the power of a quarter. Now that's the same as the fourth root of 81, as it says above. So that's asking us what number multiplied by itself four times can give us 81. And I know that as 3. 3 times 3 is 9, times another 3 is 27, and 27 times 3 is 81. Then, we have w to the power of 3 quarters. We don't know what w is, so we cannot apply that power to simplifying it any further than 3w to the power of 3 quarters. A couple more examples. m to the power of 3 fifths. Converting the other way this time. Okay, so the exponent in this question tells us how much the m is to the power of and what the power of the square root sign is. So remember, the bottom number tells us the power of the square root sign. So we're looking for the fifth root of. m remains the same. m has a numerator of 3, 
So 3 becomes the power of the amp under the square root sign. Next one. Be very careful here that there are no brackets. So it is only the y that has the power of 2 thirds. Which means we don't need to touch our 8 at all. The 8 sticks out the front and it's been multiplied by... Now the denominator of this question is 3. So we're looking for the cube root of y... The numerator is a 2, so that sticks around to be y squared. This example here, we do have brackets. So both the 4 and the h have the power of 3 halves. So they both end up under the square root sign. And they both need to be cubed. Now because the numerator is 2, and the power of a square root sign is automatically 2, we don't need to write it, that's why I've just left it blank. The numerator of 3 is translated to be the indice under the square root sign. So we need to play around with this. We're going to do a big square root. Expand those brackets means it's going to be 4 cubed and h cubed. So we have the square root of 4 times 4 times 4. So that's 16 times 4, which is 64 h cubed. And there we have it. Okay, we're going to look at just a couple more examples of actually using these powers to solve equations. So we don't have any letters this time. Whatever we end up with at the end, we're able to use that to work out the answer. All right, 243 to the power of 1 fifth. Translating that, we're going to need a square root sign, and the 243 is going to be under that square root sign. Now, the numerator of the fraction is 1, so it has a power of 1 under here, pretty much changing nothing. And the denominator is 5, so that's going to be the power of the square root sign. So we're looking for what number multiplied by itself 5 times can give us 243. Okay, for me, I think 3 to the power of 5 gives me 243. So there we have it. Our next question, we have 16 to the power of 5 quarters. Okay, we need the square root sign, we need a 16 under there. Now the bottom number is coming out front to be the power of the square root sign. The top number is joining the 16 under there to be 16 to the power of 5. You can solve these in any order you want. You can apply the square root first and then apply the indice after that. Or you can apply the indice and then apply the square root to your answer. So in our case, I'm going to find it easier to find what number multiplied by itself 4 times give me 16. And then I'm going to do that number to the power of 5. So what number times itself 4 times? That's 2. So I'm left with 2 to the power of 5 in getting rid of that square root sign. And 2 to the power of 5 is 32. Next example, 8 to the power of negative 7 over 3. So we have a negative power this time. We're not going to apply the rule just yet of flipping or doing anything like that. We're just going to do it as normal as we've just learned. So we're going to have... the Bottom number, the denominator, is the power of the 8. So it is the cube root of 8 to the power of negative 7. Okay, once again, I find it easier to do the root first as opposed to the indice. So I can apply indices to smaller numbers better than I can to larger ones. So what number multiplied by itself 3 times gives me 8. That is 2 to the power of negative 7. Now we're going to apply our little log law. 2 to the power of 7 is 128, but because we have a negative power, I'm going to drag that 2 to the power of negative 7 on the bottom. I'm going to break it up into a couple of steps. That negative 7 becomes a positive 7, so it's 1 over 128. Okay, last two examples I'll do in red so we can see the difference. 30 to the power of a quarter. So the 4 translate to be power of the square root sign. The 1 goes under here, but that's not going to change anything. So now we're looking for what number multiplied by itself 4 times gives us 30. You may need a calculator for this one. It's not going to be an exact answer. Okay, roughly it is 2.34. Okay, so there we have it. That is the link between indices and thirds. If you have a fractional indice, that pretty much means it's easier to use it as a third Remembering that the denominator is the power of the square root and the numerator is the power of the number under that square root sign. Thank you for watching this video and good luck.